there's a really interesting interrelationship between our own life cycle and the life cycle of our products. What happens to us and our stuff at our end of life? There's a kind of a stigma about what we do with our stuff. What this project wants to do is revisit that, really think about how can we find healthier, more sustainable rituals to process how we actually manage our stuff. We kicked off with an in-person workshop in Baldoyle Community Centre and the intention there was really to have people get to know who was going to be going through this collective process with them. It just felt like a very safe space and you could open up and be vulnerable and talk about your experiences of grief and feel that everyone was in the room for you even though we were all strangers at that point. It's a nice way to open up talking about what is coming and not being afraid of it. And it's also about facing death before it arrives. We were very relaxed and there was no embarrassment, there was no shame. And then we had four virtual workshops, each of which were designed around creative prompts. So the prompts were firstly revisiting. We invited the participants to do a stock take of all of their objects that they wanted to look at from the purview of this project. It was really interesting to kind of look at death that way. We don't think about like where do all our clothes go and the knick-knacky things. Just to take another look at uh, my own life, uh, at my possessions. What are the things that are important for me? that I want to keep. And it's actually not the things often that are of most monetary value. It's sometimes for me, it's, it's more the stuff that are connected to my own family history. Um, then we had repair. I had a, a candle holder made from pottery and it had been broken a few years ago when I realized it was actually my sister Anne who died in February who had given it to me. I decided I'd repair it. We then had Reimagine. It was thinking creatively about if you have an object that you really do like, but you don't really get to use very much, is there a way that you can rethink how you actually can give it more usefulness in your life? We then moved on to remember and reduce. The idea would be that you can kind of condense your most cherished memories into what can fit into a shoebox. It has pushed me a bit more to actually display the photos that I do have, you know, to make, make it a part of everyday life as opposed to just being something that is in a shoebox all the time. Um, and the final prompt, which is where we find ourselves today, is revitalise. We've got a load of really nice objects that are being sold here today with the hope of giving them a second life. Some of my grandma's belongings, uh, especially her jewellery. I carried uh, all those jewellery with me throughout the years across many countries. I kept the ones that I like myself and uh, the rest I actually just sold. I'm finally letting go of her. We, what we realised very quickly was that everyone had a very different reason for engaging with the project. And where there were overlaps, we knew there'd be sort of a peer support group that would come out of this in a very natural way. To create a safe space and a kind of marketplace for people who want to sell objects um, and to find people who want to buy them. That's the whole kind of, I suppose, journey that we brought people on through this kind of 12 week process. And um, we've now opened it up from our smaller crew of around 14 participants to a much larger group here in Bayside Community Centre today. A good number of people need support at the community level, just places where they can kind of express grief or express their fear, stress, anxieties around end of life and bereavement. And this is one of those type of places that we can create to uh, help people come together and discuss some of those more challenging conversations. And what I love about this is that it brings the circular economy and the whole association of items and our materialism together, along with that whole issue of dying, death and bereavement. So from day one, Irish Hospice Foundation were incredibly supportive. You're given this really kind of flexible space to test out an idea and see how this kind of participation or this style of delivery even works for that specific idea. I've been completely bowled over by the freedom we've had to kind of explore all of those different topics and the fact that we've been given the support to set up an event like this today has been really, really powerful.